it's still the breakfast good morning Syrian program right here on the SLBC well Patriotic Advocacy Network Syrian Pan SL is a non-governmental non-profitable and a non-politically affiliated network that was launched in 2013 to impact the spirit of patriotism and oneness in the minds of Sierra Leoneans, change the negative threats and attitude of the Sierra Leonean population, create a cordial platform of collaboration and um, cooperation for national development and advocate for the rights and liberties of the disabled, the marginalized and the discriminated people with the provision and facilities provided by the constitution. Pan Sierra Leone has expanded its operations in the regions it will be organizing a week training on leadership and capacity building for school going pupils and youths on nonviolence, patriotism, and peace, amongst others. Well, to talk more on the activities of Pan Sierra Leone, is the Executive Director and Sumana Keita. Good morning, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, SLBC. Good morning, Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. Thanks for hosting. And um, from the intro I just read here with regards to the activities of Pan Sierra Leone over the years um, since you established. How long has the organization been in existence again? And uh, by April will be eight years. Oh, that's quite yeah. a long time. Yeah. Yes, sure. and you've been engaged into lots and lots of activities. And lots of activities. Oh, you want to take us through, maybe there's something I've not highlighted here as I've just read out in my intro, as part of the work you do as an organization. Okay. And uh, since the inception of the Pitskoitic Advocacy Network Ban, and uh, one of the things that we'll be doing is to organize activities and programs that are geared towards commanding goods and development in this country. In 2013, we used the theme, Catch Them When They Are Young. So we decided to establish chapters in various schools. And these chapters that we have been establishing in various schools and uh, have helped us greatly as an organization because there we meet with school going people, mm -hmm. we train them, we groom them, we teach them integrity, leadership, and the, the essence of patriotism. And amazingly, through all the past years, these people have now transformed into becoming greater patriotic citizens, and they are doing something great for this great nation. And the current executive in the National Body of Patriotic Advocacy Network is mainly being manned by peoples who we are schooling back then in 2013 to 2014. So the organization is gradually so have you been able to assess the level of impact your organization has created over the years? Because I just heard you say um, part of um, the work you do is when engaging um, peoples in schools on patriotism, and some of them have turned out to be patriotic citizens. How right. have you been able to um, you know, ascertain how valid that is? Well, first we started the Patriot Card Case Network at Albert Academy when we were schooling in 2013. Mm -hmm. And now the Patriot Card Case Network is having chapters in all the schools with thousands of membership. Bo alone, we are having over 400 membership there. And uh, we are not only operating in Freetown, but also in the four regions in Sierra Leone. So that's a great impact. And next, just like I stated, these peoples are now manning the affairs of the organization and mainly the activities of the organization is being supported by graduates who were peoples back then in 2013. You mean financial and, uh, support? Financial support, mm -hmm. moral support, mm -hmm. advice, giving advices mm -hmm. to the organization. Even the board of directors is mainly comprised of and uh, graduates who were then peoples in the organization. So these are all immense impacts. And uh, one of the lessons learned to do our school chapters establishment, especially when we visited the region, it was a clear manifestation that it is very, very much easier for you to train and build the mindset of a kid, especially when they are at the teenager stage, 13, 14, 15, so on and so forth. And it is very, very much difficult for you to repair a man. To me, I think that's the key problem that Sierra Leone is and, uh, so how vibrant um, is actually your school clubs in the provinces? Because I'm sure you have your head office here sure. in Freetown. Sure. So how active has your operations been in the provincial areas? And uh, and uh, we started the operation effect effect effectively last year, 2020, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been very very much and uh, effective. As for Makini, we have ten school chapters there. And one of the essence why we are now organizing this one week training for the 
and their peoples in the provinces is because we want to strengthen their mindset, we want to build their capacity on leadership, so on and so forth. And amazingly in Bo, and uh, since November when we did our official establishment there, mm -hmm. we were able to be given by a people, a set of people, a set of people that we are able to be given some piece of land. And they told us for us to construct the pan center in the land. So you mean the peoples like actually yeah, donated the, the land? Yeah, to yeah. So they, they donated the, the land. They met their parents mm -hmm. and uh, they discussed the concepts of patriotism and the impact of pan. Are so you working with community stakeholders? Yeah, we are well? working with community because stakeholders. Because for you to receive a piece of land, sure. you know, mm -hmm. given to you by people. Sure. We are working with community stakeholders mm -hmm. also. They are part and parcel of our targeted groups that we are working with. But mainly our focus is the, 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 the saying that catch them when they are young, school and peoples and youths. So you how understand? many districts are you actually operating? Well, currently we are operating in four districts and uh, with the regional headquarters. And our intention for the next three years is for us to establish the organization in each and every corner in Sarah. Right. We'll Probably come back to you. We'll state. come back to you and Sumana Keita. He is the executive director of Pan Saradi and he's right here with us in the studios. It's still the Breakfast Good Morning Saradi program on the SLBC. All right, welcome back. This is uh, Good Morning Saradi on the SLBC and uh, we're talking to the executive director and Sumana Keita of Pan SL. Um, and Sumana, you guys are, be go are going to be having this uh, week-long training on leadership and capacity building uh, for school going pupils and youths so on non-violent patriotism and peace amongst uh, others. Uh, now, the two things that caught my eye there are um, non-violence and peace. Because in recent times, what we see, you guys operate in schools, you know, so we're expecting that um, your activity will help to temper down these, these pupils. Sure. What we see is that one secondary school, especially sure. the boys' school, sure. fighting against another after school. Sure. They're running helter-skelter sure. on the street and sure. probably there's one policeman trying to disperse them, sure. you know, effortlessly, <laughs> you know. So, so um, how do you intend to use this platform to, to get these pupils to better behave themselves uh, when in school and out of school? Well, as an organization, we swiftly intervene during those unfortunate incidents that occurred mainly between the Ahmadiyya and the Methodist Boys High School and also that of the Prince of Wales and Albert Academy. So currently as I'm talking to you, we, our executive is having an ongoing meeting with peoples of these schools including their various schools authority in order for us to intervene. Yesterday the Methodist Boys High School visited the devotion of the Ahmadiyya so we are building a very strong relationship you understand and uh, going out to the provinces we are now taking the message there strongly in order for us to build their mindset and based on our findings we, we are able to observe that those peoples or those who claim to be peoples that are perpetuating such acts most of them are not part and parcel of the school they are not legal peoples in these schools most of them are we uh, are the, the the uniform in order for them to commit such negative and uh, havoc, and uh, so it has been affecting and uh, the good name of the various schools. The, those diligent peoples and most of them are part of the patriotic advocacy network. In no way they did intervene or commit such acts. The example that I will give is last week. We were having a general meeting at the Ahmadiyya. And it was stated that pupils from Methodist Boys High School should not enter the premises of Ahmadiyya. But we had some pupils from Methodist Boys High School, they did enter the premises of Ahmadiyya and they were safe. Then we concluded that, oh, most of these pupils, they are not legal pupils attending these schools. So what the do you think needs to be done? You know, to, to actually address this, this situation because if these people are not legal people, I mean, if you have engagement with the school authorities, something needs to be done to stop the act. Sure. As an organization, have you um, thought of strategies you could better implement or work in line with? Um, in partnership with the school authorities sure. to address the issue. Sure. We are currently working with the school authorities, but one of the problems that we are facing, especially after the Becker stage, the SSS1 
recruitment process. You understand? You see most schools they have their deadline or they have their aggregates that they usually give for people who have taken the bucket in order for them to be incorporated to the senior secondary school. Yeah, and then we are facing a lot of corrupt practices that usually do occur, not directly to the school authority, but we have one or two teachers or one or two and uh, all or past people's alumnus who think that they have the influence in order for them to incorporate other peoples who did not meet up to the actual aggregate that is being drawn by the school. So these peoples now, giving them false hope that they are part and parcel of the school without them being incorporated into the school register, it now gives them a lot of confusion. Okay. When calling register, their names are not there. Right. You understand? Later, they will now involve in so okay. many uh, illegal okay. and bad. Before we go over to Mr. Yandi uh, Conte over there, just one <coughs> more uh, question for you. Um, I also understand that you're involved in some form of advocacy for sure. um, uh, people with uh, disabilities. Sure. Yeah. Well, tell me about that. Well, and uh, we are mainly. The, and uh, advocating for the disabled and marginalized youth, you understand? And uh, But for now, we are mainly targeting the ghetto and attire based youth who mainly in the various communities and uh, they think they are marginalized society do stereotype them. Last year, August 11th and 12th, marking the International Youth Day, we had serious engagement with various heads of ghettos and various heads of and uh, attire bases. Are they being marginalized or is it uh, their own personal choice to be in ghettos? No, that is not their own personal choice. Society usually stereotype them, society usually marginalize them. It is commonly a, a common perception in society. When you see and the youth from the ghetto, there is perception saying that they are thieves, they are not serious, you understand? They are the one committing all the negative acts in this country. So that we learn from them. And amazingly, since last year, August, we were able to incorporate them into the activities of the Patriotic Advocacy Network for them to be serving as our ambassadors. And by April 2021 this year, we shall be introducing the peace education in these various communities using these marginalized youth as our ambassadors this event is been we are partnering with the peace light and uh, in the united states of america and uh, so we intend to incorporate them more into all of our activities and again i was just i was just thinking out loud that probably you should do an anti kush campaign as well because <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what most of these these um young guys are uh, taking now and they're taking all sorts you know the other day i was watching a a video on on social media whatsapp specifically and there was this boy just laughing he sure. doesn't even know what he was laughing sure. and everybody started sure. laughing and sure. someone would say well he's on kush you know and so that what kush does to you just make sure yeah. if we take anti kush campaign there might be another innovative another drug innovative. that will be <laughs> innovated <laughs> by well, let's just let's do, a, a let's do an anti-narcotics anti campaign <laughs> yeah, yeah. so <laughs> mainly what should be our focus is mainly for us to talk to them, engage them and make them part and parcel in so our So quickly, activities. your one week training, it's starting when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow you we shall be in McKinney. Okay. Friday, Saturday, McKinney. The fourth district you're operating Yeah, in. Friday, Saturday, McKinney. Mm -hmm. Sunday, Monday, the 14th, Sunday, Monday, Kenema. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, we shall be in Bo. And Thursday, we shall be in Freetown. All right. Well, to Esmanakita. Esmanakita. Yeah, from Pan Thanks for coming in. Okay.